Wednesday, May 5th, 2021, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. There's a lot of talk about inflation out there, a lot of stories. Um, for example, billionaire Sam Zell uh, buys gold to hedge against surging inflation, the basement of the dollar. It's almost as if he's watching my videos, right? Um, so there, there he is, Sam Zell. I think he's a real estate uh, billionaire from New York. Uh, another story here, banks starting uh, to freak out about soaring inflation, which may not be transitory. I, I think one of the banks said that uh, they could have transitory hyperinflation, something like that. Uh, we saw yesterday as well that uh, Janet Yellen uh, came out uh, and said that uh, rates might have to go higher. And uh, that uh, led to a smackdown of gold and silver in a matter of minutes. And then afterwards, she came out and said, Yellen reverses earlier hawkish comment entirely, says I'm not predicting anything. So the, the economy isn't overheating as they're talking about. It's the printing presses that are overheating. So I'm gonna tell you why today inflation has been baked in the cake or is baked in the cake and there's nothing that these people can do uh to stop it yes uh jay powell uh jenna yellen and others are gonna keep saying oh it's transitory uh they're gonna find scapegoats for the rising prices as well but uh they're gonna keep inflating because publicly the federal reserve is supposed to uh how can I say, maintain full employment and stable prices. But privately, what they want to do is keep inflating without people finding out. It's a little bit like uh, Hillary uh, Clinton. I think she uh, gave a speech to Goldman Sachs and told the, the people there, yes, with you, I talk in a different way privately, right? Uh, different than what I tell the people publicly, and that's the same thing for Federal Reserve. It's the same thing for the White House and the Treasury. And it doesn't matter which president uh, is running the show. It's been happening for generations. Uh, don't be uh, deluded that something uh, will change. So we also had the uh, Mrs. Miss Circleback Pisaki, the, uh, I think she's the press officer for the White House. She said the, the White House is taking uh, the threat of inflation very seriously. Well, that's akin to a burglar saying that uh, he's very concerned about the safety of your home and that uh, he's going to look after it. He's going to take that threat seriously. Do you really think so? So before I go into telling you why inflation is baked in the cake, we need to look at uh, a book very briefly, and many of you probably have read it. I'm going to put a free link to it below in the description. Because in, or in order to understand inflation, you need to understand the basics of money, what money is. Uh, and there's no better book, in my opinion, than What Has Government Done to Our Money by Murray and Rothbard. There you go. And uh, I'm going to give you a brief summary of what I think is the most important part as it pertains to inflation. So he he's from the Austrian School of Economics, Murray Rothbard. Uh, I, I think he was uh, even a student of one of the Fed chairman. I think it was uh, back in the 50s, the chairman, I forgot. But he was at Columbia University. But uh, he does the regression uh, analysis so what that means, you, you go back to see how things started to explain what things are today. So if you go back in, in time, early civilization, human interaction, you start out with small groups of people, families, then tribes, uh, then towns, then cities, then counties, <laughs> uh, then regions, and then nations and countries. But in the beginning, people uh, in small communities had specializations and, and they basically bartered uh, amongst themselves. But then as civilization started to evolve, groups started to grow, 
uh, it became harder and harder to barter because uh, some people wanted something that uh, couldn't be provided by, by someone in a particular place. So eventually uh, the barter uh, led to indirect exchange. What's indirect exchange? Well, it's when you barter with the most marketable commodity. And what's the most marketable commodity? Well, it's a commodity that everyone's willing to accept in exchange for something else. And that's what money is. So, uh, it's not a piece of paper <laughs> issued by the Treasury or the Federal Reserve. It's something of value. And that's where uh, you need to uh, look into it to realize that uh, what we're having now, the inflation of the currency, the fiat currency out of thin air. So what you need to understand is that uh, the inflation that we're having now of the currency out of thin air has got nothing to do with value and that's why the currency is losing value and when the currency loses value uh, that means that everything goes up in value and and that's why you get rising prices but of course uh, they have changed the definition of inflation in order to fool you and many other and many other people well I would say 99.9% .9 of the people, even the people in the alternative media, economics and markets, um, they're still talking about the threat of deflation, uh, which is really a, a joke. Uh, we might get deflation after the collapse, but right now we're getting inflation. So yes, you need to understand that um, money has to be something of value. And that's why it's important for you to read this to understand that. I would say. So with that, now I'm going to go to the definition of, of inflation. And some people might say, oh, this definition is uh, from the 1920s or 70s. It doesn't apply anymore. Well, I beg to differ because uh, human nature uh, never changes. And inflation uh, <laughs> is uh, something that is part of human nature. Basically, it's uh, stealing. <laughs> it's theft. That's all it is. It's like what I was explaining to you when early civilizations found um, a marketable, the most marketable commodity or money. It's as if someone alien came to that community and said, well, now you're going to have to accept this piece of paper uh, or else I'm going to like bash your head <laughs> and I'm going to break your kneecaps uh, instead of accepting uh, what uh, the market accepted the most marketable commodity, which could have been anything. It could have been shells. It could have been uh, salt, cattle, precious metals, <laughs> uh, anything, right? So that's why it's theft. It's, it's because uh, someone with authority uh, or force comes into the community and forces people uh, by, with a barrel of the gun, basically to accept their phony creation or it's basically a counterfeit uh, a commodity they they force you to accept. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to go uh, to a couple of dictionaries now. First one is the Oxford Dictionary. And I have to thank one of the viewers for sending me this. And it's from 1925. I don't have a 1925 Oxford Dictionary. And it says, inflate abnormally increase states currency especially issue of inconvertible paper so there you go um, that's inflation so if you go back to august 15th 1971 uh, richard nixon uh, suspended the convertibility of the american dollar the american currency uh, into gold at a fixed rate what he created was inflation so Yes, inflation's been baked in the cake since 1971. And uh, if you believe we have low inflation because you believe in government statistics, then I have a, a bridge in Brooklyn <laughs> to sell to you, right? That's the old saying. So now uh, we'll look at the uh, definition from the 1970s. And unfortunately, this definition uh, has been changing. If you look at today's definition, they'll tell you that inflation is the consequence of inflation. And what do I mean by that? Well, when you increase uh, the volume, uh, abnormally increase uh, 
the currency uh, within convertible paper, that currency becomes less valuable and it results in higher prices. Yes, different prices will rise at different times and they've been able to um, basically uh, fool people into thinking that prices haven't been rising, uh, but we've seen prices of assets rising, which is also a consequence of inflation. But they need to keep you believing there is no inflation so they can keep inflating. <laughs> and that's why they're going to fight really hard with their uh, psychological uh, and management of perception operations like they did yesterday. Uh, you can bet, uh, I would be uh, willing to bet a bit of money that they had a Zoom conference on Monday, uh, Powell and uh, what's her name, Yellen. And they said, uh, yeah, I, I'm not... <laughs> I'm not uh, comfortable with gold here. Uh, look at silver. You got these people buying silver, Wall Street silver. And, and I, you can bet they know about this, what's going on. And they said, uh, well, I'm going to be speaking uh, tomorrow. That was Janet Yellen, right? And I'm going to mention that rates are going to go eventually up. So you make sure that you bash gold and silver so that it seems credible. And then afterwards, after the mar market closes, I'm gonna come out and say, I didn't say that really. I don't know when rates are gonna go up. I'll reverse my, uh, my uh, statement. And that's what they do. It's part of the uh, management of perception. So they, they keep you confused. They keep you, uh, you know, the general public, a lot of investors, they fool them into thinking that they're trying to fight inflation while they're actually creating it. And we're going to come to the creation of it in a minute. But the second definition here, this is from the 70s. This is from my dictionary. Well, it used to be my father's. He uh, gave it to me and now it's mine. So it says an abnormal increase in the volume of money and credit resulting, resulting in a substantial and continuing rise in the general price level. So... I've been trying to warn people for over four years since I started this channel about this uh, inflation lie, <laughs> the fact that they're fooling you into believing there's no inflation. And to prove that to you, I've created a playlist and, and there's 12 videos in there and it's call, called The Inflation Files. You can go through my videos if you don't believe me. And, and there's many others that I didn't put in there. So it's probably more like... Uh, 30 uh, videos just talking about what I'm talking today. So this video is probably going to go into that file as well. And you will understand why. Uh, I'm not coming here uh, <laughs> just now and telling you there's inflation because everyone's talking about it. I've been trying to warn people for years about this. So yeah, that's the inflation files. So now I want to reference a, a man... Uh, he was called the Raven of Zurich. He's uh, originally from Austria, moved to Switzerland. He was a banker, Felix Sommery. Um, you might want to look him up on Wikipedia. You will probably uh, be surprised that he actually went to the U.S. as well. He advised uh, governments during World War I, after World War I, during World War II, after World War II. And uh, during World War II, he emigrated to the United States and he advised the Treasury. He advised the United States government on the Bretton Woods Conference. He wasn't there, but he was an outside advisor. So the guy knew what he was talking about. And, and this is what he says in his memoirs, uh, The Raven of Zurich. And I'll put a link to that to that book in the description so you can read it. The hard copy is so expensive. I have one of one of the hard copies. I was lucky to buy it over 10 years ago when people were looking into Felix Sommery. And it says, that's Felix Sommery saying on page 98, the state alone is responsible for inflation. Inflation without government or indeed against government is impossible. So there you go. That's Felix Sommery. Uh, the, the other uh, statement he made and I actually tweeted it out uh, in February this year, uh, is inflation, on the other hand, 
can go on for years without its victims becoming conscious of the incredible way in which they have been swindled. So there you go. That's what's happening now. People are waking up because they've been uh, fooled into believing that uh, there's no inflation. But uh, all you need to do is look at the M1, M2, and M3 numbers. And I know that uh, the Federal Reserve is changing all the time the way they publish those numbers because they want, don't want you to keep an eye on it. But I remember when I started out in this business in the late 80s, uh, the uh, money supply numbers were still looked at. <laughs> they were just starting to get people uh, looking away from those numbers like M3 used to be a really big number from what I remember people telling me just when I started out in the 80s and even in Germany for the German markets uh, uh, M3 was really important all the way up until the 90s but then with the ECB taking over uh, that's been forgotten people focus now on the uh, what they call the CPI they call that inflation but as you've seen, it's the consequence of inflation and government can doctor that. It's very hard to doctor the money supply numbers. That would mean that uh, the central banking authorities would basically have to blatantly lie about what's going on. And I wouldn't put it past them. The other thing that shows that there is a monetary inflation is that interest rates have been near zero or one for over a decade now. And they've... Uh, been printing money through QE, which is a policy that really wasn't used uh, up until 2008. Yes, the Japanese used it. That's inflation in of itself. So, of course, <laughs> I'm going to sound like a broken record, and I've been telling people, you need to have physical gold and silver and other hard assets. Commodities are going to do well as well. So there you go. Uh, it is baked in the cake, inflation. So with, with that, let's have a look at where the markets are this morning. Um, it's uh, 8.20 a.m. London time. Uh, we've got spot gold at 17.77.50. It's down uh, about a dollar. Range has been 17.75 to 17.83.80. Yes, we had that uh, <laughs> uh, blatant manipulation yesterday. But we just need, need to ignore that and keep adding on, uh, keep uh, buying a monetary insurance, uh, buying real money, buying real value, right? Uh, what about silver? It's at 26.37, down about 11 cents, uh, about half a percent. And some people commented in yesterday's video because uh, it's 8.20 London AM, right? And uh, yesterday was around 8.30, and I was talking about the move on Monday of silver, that it was up 4%, and some people said, wow, silver's down now. I said, and I said, yes, but I don't make these videos to uh, match uh, market movements. I try to make them at the same time every morning in London, and who knows, silver could be at 27.50 by the time you watch this video, or 26. So what about the, the stock market? Well, the stock market, of course, reversed after Yellen's comments, not precious metals. Uh, and right now, the Dow is up 60 points. The Dow future, NASDAQ future is up 10 and S&P is up 6. Uh, currencies, we got sterling unchanged, 138.90. Uh, the euro is down 0.2, just below 120 at 119.89. Uh, the dollar is unchanged. Uh, versus the yen 109.42 and the dollar is fairly strong here it's rebounded a little bit versus the u1 it's at 649.20 we've been around 646 647 so it's gone up a little bit uh, crude oils continue to go up uh, we got up to 66 50. Uh, the technical picture looks very bullish for crude oil right now it's at 66 up half a percent uh, high grade copper is up a third of a percent at 454 and to finish off the 10-year yield is at 160 unchanged so there you go if you enjoyed this video make sure you hit the like button please share it far and wide think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet and you can also follow me on facebook twitter and all these other platforms below here i wish you all a great day take care
Bye.